So, so okay, I, I think that's uh, basically what I want you to say. Um, and uh, let's look at this question here. Um, so it asks, consider the circuit shown below. Does the analysis of circuit require an application of the Kirchhoff's rules, or can it be redrawn with the equivalent resistances to simplify the circuit? <clears throat> If it can be simplified, describe it. Okay, uh, you know, let's do that. Um, I think it. Uh, once you see how it's done, uh, or once you have seen it, maybe in a class previous to this one, or if you haven't, let me now do that. Then it will seem fairly intuitive. So um, let me do this in a slightly unusual order. For the, for the sake of illustrating some of the definitions. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to see if I can add these two registers in parallel. And I, I think for these two registers, it's actually easy. They kind of look parallel, so they are probably parallel. <laughs> and they are parallel. But let me use this as an example to talk about what parallel means. Um, I do have a lecture on that also, but I'm repeating for the sake of emphasis. So when you are working with a circuit, um, you have to pay attention to the apology more than the exact locations of registers. Like if you imagine this register being moved over to here and just being placed here and the rest is the wire, then that kind of change doesn't actually, um, it doesn't change anything real about the circuit. It changes how the diagram looks, but whether your circuit is represented as the R1 and R6 this way, or R1 and R6 this way, it's still the same circuit. And when you are physically building the circuit, that geometric arrangements don't matter. What matters are the topology. Where are the junctions? What things are connecting to that junction? That sort of thing. So we want to define parallel in such a way that um, it can be stated in terms of where you can think just in terms of junctions, not arrangement, geometric arrangement of the components. So with that in mind, this is the definition of something being two circuit elements being parallel. They are parallel, so uh, two elements are parallel when they have same voltages at their corresponding and end point. Uh, there's probably a shorter way of saying it. I'll think about it later. So uh, by corresponding endpoints, I mean these. Like when you look at register one, it starts from here and maybe ends here. So you have these points and you can talk about voltages at these points. You can try to measure them, maybe relative to this point that we are going to say voltage equal to zero. You can do all that. You can do that for R1 and you can do the same thing for R6. So the, so the voltage in C and voltage in D. And what this definition means is we can say that these two are parallel if we can say this. Va is equal to Vc and Vb is equal to Vd. The voltage at these two endpoints are the same. And in this specific case, the way you would argue that they should be the same would be, oh, they are connected by wire. So one of the rules about your circuit components, wires, don't cause any voltage change. So voltage from here to here, they are the same. So this is met. It's connected by wire here. So this is also met. Um, and then you might not, you might ask, so why didn't you just say uh, two elements are in parallel if their endpoints are just connected by wire? Um, I just wanted to give you a definition that'll hold forever. <laughs> As in some of you, if you are majoring in electrical engineering and computer science or some related field, you might be dealing with um, either uh, circuit classes in electrical engineering 
or upper division level circuit analysis with the semiconductor components and all that. Um, even in that context, the definition I'm giving you here will still hold. Uh, in that context, sometimes funny things can happen with the operational amplifiers. There's a, something called the virtual ground. And even when all those complications are introduced, if this is how you think of elements as being parallel, then this will hold in all the contexts where you will see this. And in the simpler passive linear circuits, like what we will deal with, that just means they're connected by wire. There's a path from one point to the other uh, through the wires only. So, so yeah, elements R1 and R6 are parallel, which means I can do this. Uh, let me get rid of this so that I can, I can basically add these in parallel. So, um, yeah, I think I can erase this. Uh, if you <laughs> somehow need the written definition, then <laughs> you know, go back in the video <laughs> and look. Um, so by adding these two registers in parallel, this is what we can say. We can say these two registers can be replaced with a single register of resistance R16, the equivalent resistance of these two and just to have a single wire come down, R16, and then single wire go there. Okay, and from the resistance combination formulas, this is the formula for this. One over R16 will be equal to one over R1 plus one over R6, where the resistances um, add in reciprocals when parallel. Okay, so that's one. Um, let me go look for, now these combinations are a little bit more complicated. So for example, if someone were to ask me, how do R4 and R3 relate to each other? Are they in series? Are they in parallel? I will have to say neither. So you can clearly see that they won't be parallel because when you look at these end points, so one pair of endpoints have the same voltage because they're connected by wire, but these two endpoints, uh, they're not connected by, wire, by a wire. There's a register in the way, so they are not parallel. Okay, and then you might ask, are they in series? So this is where we have to cover the definition of series. So if I had to give a definition of what does being series mean, um, I would say this. Definition of two circuit elements being in series means um, two elements are in series if um, the current, the electrical current through one circuit must go through the other. And this um, and this uh, most part is important. That means if there are any alternate paths that currents can complete a circuit through, then they are not in series. So when you look at R4 and R3, I can imagine, you know, being a person who goes through um, R4, I'm an electron that just passed through R4, and I'm loitering somewhere here. And as I'm here, I see two possible paths that we can go to. I can go through R2 or I can go through R3 maybe. So you can see that for this uh, charge here that has gone through R4, it doesn't must go through R3. There are other possibilities. So R4 and R3 are not in series either. Uh, okay, so we can't combine these two now. Let's see if there are other, um, other elements that we can combine. And having given this definition of series circuit elements, I hope you see that um, if you have gone through R5, as you are sitting here, there's no other place you can go other than through R3. So, so these two elements are in series. Uh, currents going through these elements have to go through one after the other. That's sort of what series could mean in English. So, so yeah, you can add these two in series. And when you look up the formula for adding uh, registers in series, it's quite simple. You just add them. 
So this combination of registers, we could imagine replacing it with a single register, R35, and its resistance will be equal to R3 plus R5. It is simply it, like that. Um, and in the lecture, there's more detailed justification. Now, once we've added this into a single element, uh, you can see that, oh, the end point here, they have the same voltage. And now the end point here have the same voltage. So R4 is in parallel with this uh, uh, combined equivalent resistance. So we can do this. We can uh, combine all of this into one adding R4 and R35 in parallel, then what the expression will look like, let me make some room here. What R4 plus R35 will look like is the, the combined equivalent resistance, R4, 3, 5. It, 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 they add in reciprocal, that equivalent resistance, R4, 3, 5, one over that is equal to 1 over R4, one of the two registers I'm adding in parallel, plus 1 of the R35, the other register I'm adding in parallel. Yep. So I, I can treat this uh, entire thing as uh, one circuit element for this analysis. Now, once I've done that, uh, R2 and R435 are in series. Because if you imagine a current, a charge that's coming along here, and let's say at this junction, it went down, went through R2. As it's sitting here, it has to go through this complex. So, so it's going to go through um, this whole equivalent resistance. So, so the current that goes through R2 must go through this uh, R435. So, so these two elements are in series. So you can add um, R2435 <laughs> is equal to R2 plus, uh, I'll just write this stuff, R435. And either you, you know, put this in algebraically or do something. At some point, these expressions do get kind of tedious. Um, so at this point, uh, with all these simplifications, I think this is where you sit. You have a battery and it's hooked up to two registers. You have one far away that we didn't actually have to add, but we did. So let's represent it that. R16, and you have another resistance here that using the label we've been using, we have the label R2435. Um, so it looks like I have two registers in parallel. So you add these two in parallel and you're done. Um, so this is one of those circuits that you can uh, simplify by uh, simplifying each step of the circuit as being parallel or series. And I will tell you that, uh, which you will also see as you work through the homework set, is um, um, it doesn't take a lot to mess up what you are seeing now. So for example, if I just want you to make it impossible that you can do the whole thing without introducing Kirchhoff's rules, I can do this. I can add a, uh, add a battery. Maybe at this point in the circuit, you know, break it out here, put a battery here, and nothing here. So, you know, it's a battery that's just attached to here. Then I hope you can see that, oh, this R4, it's no longer in parallel with this combination. Because uh, the voltage here and the voltage at this point after you've gone through battery will be different. So they are not in parallel. But because of these junctions, they are also not in series. What are they? <laughs> uh, so this is the general kind of circuit where you need to use Kirchhoff's rules. There's really no other way around.